So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what happened to me when I did not budget for three weeks. I didn't even look at my budget. And this is my catch up video. I show you my actual finances and the whole process that I went through to go from three weeks backed up to everything green, everything good, everything ready to go. The reason I'm doing this video is to show you that it's not that big of a deal when you forget to budget for a while. You can just pick it right back up. There might be some uncomfortable feelings that come up, but it's really not that big of a deal. The biggest barrier that I've experienced to budgeting and that I see other people experience with budgeting is that they feel guilty about not doing it right. There's this belief I see in my head that comes up that there's something wrong with how I'm doing this. And you might relate to that when you approach your budget or forget to budget or forget to enter something perfectly correctly. You might assume that there's something wrong with the way that you're doing that. And that little tension that creates makes it harder to engage in the process. And so ironically, when you forget to budget for a little bit of time, that belief that there's like you're unique with your problems and that you're not good enough to do this is the thing that prevents you from getting back on track and acting intentionally with your budget. This happens with budgeting, but it also happens with general life patterns too. When you're doing a healthy behavior and then you mess up a little bit, you might think like, oh, I, you know, I can't do it. But this video, I think, will help show you that with budgeting, with other things in your life, there's a few key tweaks that it takes to get back on track and do the important thing, which is consistency over the period of years. That's the thing that's gonna change your life, not doing some uh, formula or process exactly correct. Something that I think will help you in this video is seeing that you're not alone in the process, watching me after I haven't budgeted in a while and catching up and what that looks like and seeing that there's someone else that goes through these, these struggles, but also seeing how I deal with the difficult emotions that come up with awareness and just noticing them come up and then continuing regardless. Because the thing is, there's no proper way to budget. There's no exact correct way to budget. There's people that teach about budgeting and have these formulas and systems, and then, and they're experts with budgeting, right? And then there's you and you're the expert on what works for you. And so the idea is to take these systems and processes, take your expertise and combine them together. And what that really takes is a lot of self-trust. And so I hope that in this video, you will learn to trust yourself more and realize that however you're budgeting, however it works for you is perfectly okay. So by the end of this video, you will feel empowered to regardless of how long it's been since you budgeted, even if you've never budgeted before, you will see that it's, it's okay to deal with the difficult emotions that come up with something like this and to reap the rewards of that. It's not, it's not that hard and it's not that big of a deal. Part of the motivation for making this video is my own experience with budgeting and this belief that I've been working with of there is something wrong with the way that I'm doing this. I'm a bit more spontaneous. Sometimes I do it consistently daily. Sometimes I do it every few days. And sometimes like you will see in this video, I take breaks of a few weeks and just don't really pay attention. But then I come back. The belief that I've had that there is something wrong with the way that I'm doing this is the biggest friction for getting back. So one week, not that big of a deal. Two weeks, okay, it's kind of uncomfortable. Three weeks, okay, this is gonna be really stressful to get back on my budget. But I noticed that when I was thinking like, okay, I'm not doing it right. How am I gonna do this? Maybe I should just give up. You know, there's this thought train, this energetic stickiness that actually makes it less likely for me to get back on track budgeting. What's a bit different about this video than other videos you might see is my encouragement to trust yourself in this process. There's people out there that can help you. There's lots of YouTube videos that can help give you tips but you are the person that needs to apply to your life. You are the expert. And so I'm encouraging you to trust yourself in the process of budgeting and find something that works for you rather than relying on experts. So if you stick around till the end, you will see it go from so many overspent categories and this massive chaos, dozens of uncategorized transactions to being clean as a whistle at the end, just all green and me feeling very much relieved. So I've been budgeting for about four years now and I'm a life coach and change manager. And one of the things that I've been most excited about in my budgeting journey is the change in mindset that I have, where I was a little bit skeptical of how I was doing it at the beginning and looking for right solutions and thinking that maybe what I did was wrong. And now I'm a bit more relaxed with it. I It's just like something that I know helps me and something that I knows, know makes me feel better about my life. And 
So engaging with it and even catching up isn't that big of a deal. So this video is for people that want to cultivate a better relationship with budgeting and may feel some fear or tension when they go to budget and to help shift that into more trusting energy and more excitement about getting this area of your life under control and in order. So because I'm a life coach, this is a, this is a budgeting video, but it also points at something that applies more generally to life in general. The most general manifestation of this kind of fear anxiety around budgeting is this belief that there is something wrong. It applies to finances, but it applies to things in general. There's something wrong with how I'm uh, doing relationships. There's something wrong with the way that I'm approaching my, my work and my productivity. And so what I show you in this video is a general solution to basically any problem that you'll have in life. There's very specific problems and solutions which you will also see through YNAB, like how do you do certain things when errors come up in YNAB? But the more general solution to problems is how do you take action consistently and go forward and deal with the, the uncomfortable emotions that come up as you're making progress towards something that you want? Part of the answer is releasing and letting go of the belief that there's something wrong with the way that you're doing it. And part of the answer is continuing on the path, taking the next step over and over. So you'll notice as you're watching this video that I'm going through my YNAB system and processing the different stuff that comes up. But at the same time, I'm, I'm paying attention and, and noting like, oh, wow, I'm feeling really overwhelmed right now. And then right back to it, right? Being aware of the feeling, not reaching for social media, not reaching for distractions, and then getting right back to the process. Because that is probably the biggest thing that will get in your way is like there's the discomfort that emerges and then there's the getting back to it because we have so many distractions. There's infinite number of things that we could pick up and look at like, oh, I feel kind of uncomfortable. So I'm gonna go on Instagram or I feel kind of uncomfortable. So, you know, I'm gonna go watch Netflix for a bit. Infinite distractions always within arm's reach. So in this video, you'll see the process of me confronting the difficult emotions, noting them, be, being aware of them, and then continuing with the process. Relieving some of the pressure that comes up not going for distractions, but going right back to the process and how it's actually pretty simple once you see how it happens. And so I show you the process from three weeks backed up, not knowing what a bunch of purchases were and not looking at how much money I had to spend to back to baseline where everything's green, all the categories are filled out and all of the expenses are categorized. If you saw my last video, you know, it's easy to show the budget when everything's in order and I'm doing everything perfectly, but it's normal to have ups and downs. So I wanna show you what it's like to be in more of the, the down period where I'm not budgeting. I haven't been budgeting as consistently. It's about a month and a half since I did my last video since I recorded it and I was probably budgeting for about three weeks after and then I just stopped for a while. So I'm getting back on it. It's a little bit messy and I'm gonna walk you through the process. All right, so right away here, you will see that this is messy. $600 of uncategorized transactions, 2,027.77 ready to assign. And as I scroll down here, you'll just see a bunch of like overspent categories. And part of the reason I think I was hesitant to do this uh, to budget for a while is because I knew that I overspent in some categories and now I have to deal with it. <laughs> That'll mean moving money from categories that I don't want to move money from. That'll mean uh, a variety of things. So let's dig into it. Let's let's get it going. So I'm going to save the checking in the SoFi the ready to assign until after I've gone through my expenses and then I will put money into the categories from the last time I got paid. So let's head into the uh, Delta card. <sighs> okay. Yeah, just looking at this is kind of overwhelming. So this is going to be a, a lot of work to, to figure this out. So my default screen when I do this is I open up my Amazon payments and I open up Venmo. Throughout this, I will be going back and forth. I'm also going to be making some notes about what to charge and all that. So Soul Foods one was some party supplies. I'll put this in the gifts category, some dining out, um, and also groceries and just split this across it because it is a lot. How do I figure this out? So this will be $20 from Christine, 
to go to groceries. So when I get paid back, I will put it into the grocery fund. You know what? I'll do it like this. Okay, so I'll consider a little bit of that gifts. All right, I know this is Apple storage. So now I have to actually, I'm using my phone to record this. So I'm gonna to try to figure out how to find out what I spent on Apple <laughs> uh, without looking at my phone, which is how I usually do it, so. So some of the thoughts going through my head right now are I have better things to be doing. I need to work right now. Just all this, this list of stuff that is coming up, me wanting to avoid going through this list, things I could be doing better. Cause it's kind of painful to realize that I have so many transactions to go through and having to investigate some of them is super annoying especially right here at the beginning. I just went, you know, it's an alphabetical, uh, it's not an alphabetical order, but there's some Apple bill stuff that came up. So we'll see what this is. And now my internet's going slow. So there's this thing that you can sense, uh, you can tell where your nervous system's at based on how you're perceiving time. So if, if, it, if it seems like everyone is moving slow and time's moving slow and you're kind of annoyed by it, like if you're driving and wow, this car is going really slow. That is more of a fight or flight response of like, you know, you're zoned in, you're frustrated, you want to get somewhere and go fast. If you're feeling super overwhelmed, that means your your nervous system is a bit lower. It's down regulated um, and things are overwhelming and are going too fast. So right now things are moving really slow. I want to get through this quickly. Okay. All right, so this is an app that I thought I canceled and a movie purchase, uh, movie rental. So movie rentals, I put in fun money. Uh, make a note. I, I'm going to check and see if I already vent mode because I split this usually with my partner. It's not movie rentals are all, like not that much, but it can just feel better to split them. All right, so I didn't do that. So dream scenario. Great movie, by the way, kind of a metaphor of what it's like to live in the Internet age where people see impressions of you. You see me doing this video and you don't really know anything about me. <laughs> you have an impression of me and I don't know. I thought it was a great movie. Dream scenario with Nick Nicholas Cage. All right, so. That'll go into fun money. And then this other thing is like, I don't, <laughs> I don't have a, a budget category for it because it's an app that I thought I canceled. So I'm actually going to email them and try to cancel it. This will hurt stuff. I forgot to budget for a big $28. That's kind of crazy. Okay. And this one is like a new self-development app that I also did not budget for. I do want to use it for a while, but I'm going to cancel it now. So this is what I do with subscriptions. I, even if I love it and I'm sure that I am going to use it, I subscribe. Actually, if there's, if there's any doubt in my mind, I subscribe and then I cancel right away and I still have the subscription till the end of it. And what I find out is that oftentimes I just forget that I canceled and I don't get charged again and I never use the app again and <laughs> I just forget about it. Uh, whereas the alternative is that, of course, you forget about it and then you lose money. So I'm going to put this in my quarterly theme because the app is related to my quarterly theme. All right, now we'll go to Amazon. Let's see what this is about. Wow, I'm giving you a lot of classic modern examples of what happens when you forget about subscriptions or when you're not using your budget app um, and you don't have this stuff under control. This is a fish oil supplement that I now have three bottles of that I was on a subscription for from Amazon. So I have officially canceled this and I officially have way too much fish oil. So this will go in supplements and I will go over because fish oil is expensive and now I'm going to have to move some stuff around. 
All right, another Apple bill. Let's see what's up with this. I'm going crazy with the apps. <laughs> what is this? Wow. Okay. I don't think I've been under $50 on stuff I forgot to budget for in a very long time. So I am I could pull this out of the overspending fund because it's similar. It's not technically overspending, but I could do that. But I'm going to make it hurt a little bit because this kind of puts me in like that, that you know, yellow zone of like I need to pay attention. So maybe I was feeling a little bit too abundant uh, and just buying stuff willy nilly. So I made a note to cancel this app after I'm done budgeting and that's what I will do. All right, so electric and gas. I usually just do this Venmo stuff while I'm doing the budget, but if I, like I said, I'm filming this on my phone, so I'm gonna make a little note. So what you saw is that I'm overspent in this category. You might be wondering, why are you overspent in a category when your age of money is like 80 to 90 days? Because I told you that I, I, I want to make the gap between when I get money to when I spend it to be about two months at least. But there's these, these things like there's some categories where I want it to be a little bit shorter because it helps me get a better handle on when like with varying expenses when I'm spending more than I normally do. So I used to have this category called like fun money groceries. And I just like that was for eating out at a grocery store deli or like buying snacks and treats stuff that wasn't strictly necessities. And I kept that within one month of my, my spending because I knew that was a category that I was apt to spend a lot in. And I didn't want to keep like, OK, I have three months worth and it goes down to one month and I replenish it to three months uh, or two months. And so. That's one that I keep kind of close. This one, electric and gas, it varies. And we're in the winter right now, we're using the gas a bit more. And so this, this helps me get a better handle on when we're using too much. You'll notice that I'm gonna be charging um, my partner for half of this, so it will come back, but that's, that's just a note there. All right, some groceries. Rosalini's. I don't know what this is, so I'm going to look up what Rosalini's is. All right, this was a dining out. I remember I got a little latte. Adulis. Let's see here. Yeah, this was a super expensive one where I also partly paid for a friend. So Webflow. So this is something that I charge to this account because it's easier to keep track of. And it goes on a credit card, so I get points for it, all that. But this comes from my business account. So what I do is I spend on my personal account, and then I pay my personal account from my business account, and that helps me keep things in order. So I made a little note of that, and then that goes into this that category. I think that's overspent. Yes, exactly. So that's that's what I do. This was some fun money stuff. This was for Dungeons and Dragons, and now you see fun money is getting pretty low. So another dining out, some of the best ice cream ever. Shell, I have no idea what this is. Actually, I do remember. Um, it's like a late night snack thing, so I put that in groceries. Now comes the big grocery bills. Me and my partner have tried different ways of doing this splitting groceries up right now we eat fairly different things so we actually we we try to like even if we go to the store together sometimes we go to different cash like we go to different registers <laughs> um because it makes it easier because receipt math is annoying but right now we're still doing receipt math the alternative we might try it at some point but we both like kind of like expensive health food things that the other one doesn't have like i really like raw dairy but my partner doesn't do dairy. So receipt, receipt math is what we got. Is it worth it? I'm not sure. So I'll tell you what, in terms of friction, adding up receipts is high friction. I don't like doing this. Yeah, this is crazy. Okay. Okay, we're finding one around 2.10, February 10th. Oh, here it is. 
and it's already fading. They designed these receipts on purpose to fade. I'm pretty sure because it, it'll uh, it's hard to return something. But yeah, I can barely read this. But I actually think this is all my stuff. Believe it or not. Oh, there was a present in here. So that's the other thing is that. So the ideal that when when I'm on top of my game and I'm being proactive, I will sit down right after going to the grocery store and do this. And it's so much better. It's so much better because I'm actually excited. I, I'm in the momentum. So we'll split that. Most of it is groceries. I see kind of silly stuff on here, too. So it's it almost makes me want to make that grocery luxury grocery fun money category again. But I'm just going to keep it how it is for now. If any of y'all track your groceries and what you have consistently, let me know in the comments. Because I'm seeing some stuff on here, like I I bought and it was fairly expensive and I just haven't used it yet. So yeah, but this was all mine. I'm taking that, no Venmo. All right, Chewy. We split this down the middle. Cat stuff. Okay. This was a gift. It's kind of funny, I ordered the exact same thing and it was 15 cents different. Okay, and then this one will is a gift to a client, so it's gonna come out of my business account. All right, another Amazon, let's see what's up. All right, and this was home good stuff. This is like some paste to help propagate plants. Thefabulous.co. Another app. <laughs> I did cancel this one. It was hard to cancel. I had to email them, but I canceled it right away. Credit card payment. All right, this is a uh, more business stuff. I'm going to transfer from my business account. All right. More PCC. More grocery store. So let's see. All right, this was not all mine, so I'm going to do the receipt math. I'm going to do that later, though. Therapy. And another Amazon. Let's see what this is. $21.99. And Amazon has a payment page, so it's really easy to just go down. I scroll through and look at the total prices and find it. All right, this is more supplements. This is one that I use for sleep. And I will be really overcharged on supplements. So that's kind of the it's a good wake-up call for canceling my subscriptions. That fish oil really did me in here because I think that's an extra $100. So it was like 50 bucks a bottle, something like that. And I have two more than I need right now. I'm using one and I have two in storage. And of course the fish oil could go bad before I start using it. It's possible, who knows? But this is, uh, yeah, so. All right, first credit card done. Then I got a new credit card. So let's see how many is in here. 16, it's not the most, but it's not the least either. All right, so I'm gonna split this up. Part of this was a gift. Part of this I will count as dining out because it was me eating there. Um, I'll just split it in half. <sighs> it was a good dinner though, I'll tell you what. Cafe Flora, I recommend. If you live in Seattle, Cafe Flora. This one was more gifts. Some fun treats for a birthday. I will also split this one. You know what? I'm not going to split that one. I'm going to do dining out. Sometimes this is like, how much lee leeway do I have? All right, this, yeah, I got a refund for this. I ordered a cake and they didn't get the order and I ordered it gluten-free and they don't do gluten-free. So it's just a whole, uh, <laughs> whole mix of stuff there. 
sometimes when I'm going through this, like it's fine to do it just in order here, but I also like, okay, this is one that I know I can just put in the medical appointments and expenses. So this, this, these are glasses. Finally ordered some glasses. I put that off for so long and I ordered them. So a little, uh, blast of fun there. Let's see. Okay. So it doesn't really matter because this is going to go in and out, but do that and then do that. And then those cancel each other out. This was a gift a facial and I am now overspent my gift category. So I anticipated this and I will show you how I'm going to fix that vacation. This was a flight that would have been a lot more. And this is just the taxes on it because I use credit card points. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, these are receipts, PCC view, Ridge. What did I get there? Got some silly stuff, but it was groceries. All right, look at this. So see this little uh, chain here? This is, this is, I love it. So this is when I sat down and immediately did the receipts right after I went to the store, which is fantastic. So that means I connected it. It's connected. See that little connection sign? I love it. Did it with this one too. Did it with this one too. All right. So we're getting down to it. Yeah, there's only one more here. Automatic payment. So this is a credit card payment. Sometimes it doesn't automatically catch that. Okay. Transfer from payment from checking. There we go. Hmm. Okay. So still 150 uncategorized and Oh, that must be in the checking. All right. We'll get to that in a second. Let's finish up this credit card. Whole Foods. This was some uh, party stuff. And this is a, this is a weird one because I, I don't have a party category. So I really don't know where to put this. I might just take it in the groceries category. My partner's going to cover half of this. Uh, let's go over here and look. Basically, I'm looking at this because this it, my groceries are going a lot lower than I want them to. Like that's it's like less than a month now. So, uh, it's like kind of concerning. And there's not many that really match that category. So I'm going to do it for now. And this is just a great thing to note in the future. I think when I bought this, I was like, this is gift stuff. You know what? I am going to, I, I am going to do the gift because that's, I think closer. But I'm just going to make a note. <sighs> okay. So now I'm massively overspent there. All right. 1195. That's like not that much. That's great. <laughs> I'm going to find the receipt if I still have it and just like toss it out. Otherwise these things build up. All right. Amazon. Let's see what this one is. The last one. Oh man. It's more supplements. I usually have excess money in my supplements, but this was a multivitamin. I haven't been doing my multivitamin recently. I wanted to try it again, but that is significant. So let's see what happens. Yeah. So now overspending is 158, which doesn't feel great, but I'm doing great because I went through my transactions. It says, so that's, that's great. So, so far, that's cool. So basically what I'm doing here in the order is that I could have put my income into the categories first, but I'm kind of swallowing, swallowing the bitter pill here. And then we'll do it, do that second. I kind of prefer it this way because it ends on a more positive note, but we'll, we'll see what happens. All right, paid the built. So I used the built card and that's for rent. And you'll notice that that wasn't enough for rent, 263. I pay for a few people's phone bill and they pay me of course, but like we're on a phone plan together. So it's cheaper. And then the built card covers your like $800 of phone insurance. So I use that for my phone insurance. 
case my phone breaks, they will pay me most of the, the cost for a new one. So, all right, got my owner's comp, got the inflows here. Um, let's see what this outflow of 200 is. So I go through my Venmo and then I do a, a search. That is a table. So I will, this is actually the payment for the table. Okay, so 100 table, I mean 200 table, but then this one is also table. There we go. So I'm not as under as I might have been. This is a night out with friends. Another night out. Not a night out. It was ice cream again. Oh my god. <laughs> I have tried to cancel this app so many times. It like it's one of those ones that whatever you spend it rounds up and then multiplies it and whatever but i can't, tried canceling it three times i deleted the app i don't have this on my phone anymore and this is just incredibly annoying so i'm gonna try it again I'm making a note here might have to email them I, I don't know what the deal is i've canceled like i thought i connect disconnected all my bank accounts from this it's just super annoying okay that's an auto pay for a credit card i don't know which credit card so i'm going to find that out right now it does say business, but I have two Chase business cards. Chase Inc. Business Unlimited. That's what it is. Okay. Payment to Chase Inc. Business Unlimited. There we go. These are investments that go. So I'm gonna I'm gonna organize these after I uh, categorize my income. All right. That is short form editor payment. Thank you, Tim. So I got a lot to transfer from my business account this time. Feels good. Feels good to be spending some of that, that money. Now the income from Venmo. I think my ideal with Venmo is like, I, I usually wait until it hits here and then I have to go back. But I think like when I get a Venmo request and pay it, I could come in here proactively and type the money in. Cause I, I know that there's going to be a significant amount of Venmo transactions that I just did. Cause again, I'm catching up with my finances right now that are going to come in in the next day or two. Let's see who paid me, who paid me. That'll help with the overspend on the cat maintenance. So it's kind of fun because I'm like, oh, like I'm super overspent in a bunch of categories and then I'm going to put money back in them. So hopefully that'll help a bit. All right, so that's 25 and this is the rest. All right, who paid me 98? I think I might have done, there's one of my credit cards that doesn't connect to YNAB which is incredibly annoying. All right, I'm, I'm going to check that out later. But anyways, some of these, there might have been a charge. One of these is a charge that I'm not sure where I put the money. It's for a little spa that we went to. This is for parking. This is a little dining out. All right. Where would I put this? Actually, I might have a category for it. Nope. This is a tough one. It is a spa that I really like. I might split this up among some things. Like, I guess I just like didn't think about what I was going to do. <laughs> this is just crazy. Oh, here's here's one. I, okay, I realized that I put a, a business expense in the wrong category. Now that I'm seeing that I already transferred some for something else. All right, fun money is basically spent. Trying to find things that are like at least somewhat related. I think the quarterly theme would be somewhat related. Surrendered connected genius this this year. I don't want to look at the sinking funds because you know that's so proactive that I don't want to mess up the energy going into like the money stream going into those. Slightly medical. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like. I could think about it as like self care. So that's that. That's still a lot to put in there. So I'm going to find one more perhaps. Vacation. I don't really like that. <laughs> Whew. Okay. 
So the medical appointments, I'll do like 40 of it. So I just realized this is income and not expenses. So I am going to be writing this down and then mirroring that because I, I know this expense hasn't come in. So I'm going to, I'm going to need to find it on my other credit card. I gave them my new credit card, but I think they accidentally did on the old one because I, I didn't see it come through. So we'll see. Actually, I'm going to open up a new tab and search for that. Let's see here. This place is called Banya and it is fantastic. I'll tell you what. Hmm. Damn. All right. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Let's continue on. Yeah, I don't have a place to put this, so it just feels awkward. Um, I could put in things I forgot to budget for, but I don't have enough money left in that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it like that. Twenty. I know. I'm gonna write it down. And I should stress again that this isn't fun going through this right now does not feel good okay this is i'm i'm curious if there's like one of my cards isn't loading in here oh man here we go here we go <laughs> so i haven't done it in a while and i was like okay this is a lot of transactions blah 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 but look at this 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 means that I don't even have the charges on here. So probably the Banya thing is on here. I was just thinking about this. We're paying for a heart scan for our cat. And these are both in, in this that has the little wrench here because it means that it's it's not loading. Which is curious because these both co come from the same chase portal. So I'm going to need to fix this. Okay, so I'm going to need to come back and I'm not done with this catch up. <sighs> okay, so this will go in the cat, bigger cat stuff, heart scan deposit. All right, now we get to the more fun stuff, okay? Categorizing the money. But I know that I overspent in a bunch of stuff, so this is not going to be super fun. I'm going to save these and come back. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to do it right now because I changed this. I, I changed how, I'm, how I've been categorizing these. So the 137 will go here, and that's how I'm going to choose how much I put in there because it doesn't match what I, I wrote here anymore. So my last video, some kind chap told me that the Roth max is now 7,000 instead of 6,000. So I do adjust that. All right. So now let's go through, see how, how, <laughs> okay. So do 250. And again, I'm matching this because I updated the fidelity auto withdrawals, but it's going to be, it's going to start next month. Just go through here and do it normally and then deal with the consequences of not budgeting for a while afterwards. So I'm really protecting these uh, sinking funds, the infrequent expenses. Because it feels so good to be proactive. All right, so I'm going to have to deal with that gift fund. This is actually better than I expected. So maybe I messed something up, but... <laughs> All right, this is cool. So this is one where the one that I just did, the home good stuff, it's in the negative, And then this is beautiful because I waited until I, to the end to put the money in my income. And that feels good so that, that I'm not actually overspent in that category. All right, back over a thousand there. That might be something that we can take money out of for other expenses. Nobody mentioned this in the last video, but I realized that I, that my, it, this wasn't equaling the the total here like I was anyways that's fixed now so electric and gas again that will come from Venmo soon so that's good 
Thank God. Feels good to see that over a thousand because that was getting so low. That supplements fund. I feel good about the dining out dates fund. So that's great because I did it a lot and it seems to be going well. The dining out is a category where I'm not going to be putting two or three months worth of money in there because I know that if it was there, I would just spend it. And so this is the one where I keep it on a tighter leash of like two weeks worth or a month worth and then proactively reflect and be like, can I spend this? Of course, I didn't do that the last three weeks, but uh, that is, I'd say, usually what I do. Somebody told me in the last video that instead of going through and doing all this, I could just press fund, like have, have these goals that I have written here, like put that into an actual goal. The reason I wasn't doing it before is that I like doing this twice a month, but I might do this. They, they, this person, I think it was Nanette told me that you can have last month's money in a category and then fund all the categories at once, like on the first of the month. So I might actually do that. That sounds kind of cool. All right. Oh, this is a category that I just have to remind myself. So one of these was supposed to go down here, the business fees. Huh. Okay. So I will fix that. At this point, I want to say I've been doing this for 52 minutes is how long I've been doing this. And I'm starting to get exhausted and starting to want to take shortcuts. So I think it's good to give you a little insight into my mindset right here that to some degree I have to push through and it's not that fun, but <laughs> it's actually nice to be recording the video because it feels to some extent like I'm not doing this alone. All right, so I'm starting to lose focus a bit too because of how long I've been doing this. It's a little bit stressful. So I want the one of these to go down here the $230. So I'm just going to search 230. It wasn't in there. I think it was in the Delta card. 230. There we go. So that goes there. And then this I'm going to transfer from my business account. So I'm going to do that and then add a transaction. So I'll show you how to do that. All right. So that's taken care of. Oh, I'm going to do another transfer for that. So I could have added that on, but I just didn't. I forgot. All right, 1985. All right, so that's taken care of. All right, now let's see these little nasty overspends gifts you know i'm gonna take that i have this category that i called unexpected large expenses but i'm kind of like this has just been sitting there for i guess a time like this where i got a bonus and then i filled up a bunch of categories and then this was like what was left over so i'm going to use this now because this kind of was like a large expenses month where i was doing a bit more i got a my partner's birthday was this month and i felt really inspired to <laughs> spend And I'd say it was worth it. So there, took care of that. Still have 53, 73 left. Electric and gas. This, I don't like going over in this. I know that the Venmo is going to come through soon, but I was also pretty close to the wire and this is one that I could have a bit more in. So I'm, I'm gonna just fill this in now. And then I'm going to get the Venmo thing and that will balance out. So now these supplements, what do I do here? So I'm going to put the rest of the money that I have from that into this. And now I'm going to start collecting from other, other funds that I think have a little bit extra in them. So the overspending fund, I'm going to, I like to have about a hundred in both of these, but so it's a little bit low now, but that's okay. Chronometer I canceled. All right. Well, that's perfect, right? canceled something, I've been putting money into it, and I I definitely canceled this too, so 
minus 17.75. Oh man, look, I only need 10 cents after that. So 24.75. Another way you can do it just to show you with the last 10 cents is that you can say plus 10 and then just collect it that way. So, oh, I need 10 more cents where I'm gonna take that from. Chronometer. I actually might wanna get chronometer back again. So I'm gonna keep that category. This 1.65, it's low enough and I know that I'm not exact with all these goals that I'm just gonna hide this category now. There we go. Whew. All right, I'm still, I don't know what's happening with this. This is weird. Um, I think this is because it has like this, like I've gone through everything here and I think this is because it hasn't uploaded in a while. So I'm gonna keep that as it is for now and wait and come back here. This is also something that's good about being a bit more proactive with the charges is that I don't need to wait until they're uploaded in order to figure this out. So this is a little bit incomplete, but I've walked you through the process of what it's like <laughs> to not budget for a few weeks or a month and then have to go through it. So. I'm looking at the time here. This was about an hour. It's 59 minutes and 30 seconds right now. So not too big of a deal after three weeks or a month, especially when there's all these confusing charges. And this was a bit heavier of a month where I was spending stuff that wasn't proactive. I was doing stuff that was a little bit more silly than I typically do. And there was a lot of confusing stuff happening. As you can see, we're not totally done because there's some things that are hanging out there, like this credit card that wasn't totally loading all the charges. But I feel this sense of, honestly, right now I'm kind of agitated. <laughs> Having done this, I need to take a break. That was a kind of intense hour. But I hope this gives some insight in what it's like when you're not perfect. You know, it's easy to curate stuff for YouTube videos that, you know, when we're on top of our game, but this is kind of what it's like to live in the real world is sometimes we forget and it's, you know, budgeting isn't always top of mind for me. You know, if you're not always on top of budgeting or you're spending stuff that's a little bit chaotic or it's unplanned, a lot of the stuff I didn't check with my budget before I bought it, I do it too. Other people do it too. No one's perfect. And at the end of the day, it's a little bit stressful to figure all this stuff out, but it's not that big of a deal. I'd say with the rest of the stuff that I need to do here with like Venmoing and adding up receipts and stuff probably gonna be 15 minutes I think I'm gonna take a little bit a little bit of a break before that though and just recharge So I hope that was valuable. Don't forget to like comment subscribe If you want to stick around and see more videos like this I want to say that I'm not often doing finance videos, but maybe I will in the future because uh, you guys like the last one and Yeah, so I'm glad that it was well received but yeah, please let me know what you think. I learned a lot from the last, like I made a YNAB video a couple weeks ago and I learned so much from y'all's comments. So if you see something that I'm doing here that's just an easy fix, like, hey, you should think about this, then please let me know because it would help me out so much. All right, till next time. All right, so a little update here. My, this, this credit card was yellow and after doing some research, I realized that that was because the balance that the credit card company was sending to YNAB didn't match the transactions. And that's because this is a credit card that I got recently. I only added it to YNAB maybe like a week or two after I got it and started using it. And so all the transactions weren't on there. And what I did was I went on the credit card website and then I went to YNAB and then I had to manually enter a lot of those transactions. And oddly enough, it has been a few weeks since I added that, and as I was adding the transactions manually, all of the ones, I got probably halfway through like 20 uh, transactions, and then all of them loaded automatically. So not sure what that was or why that happened, that it happened exactly while I was entering them manually that, that it updated, but it did. And so anyways, one, one other thing that I used to do, because it was still a little bit off when I went back, and there was something that YNAB had added called starting balance on the credit card and I had to delete that entry and so now it's back to normal. But um, yeah, 
uh, one more example of what happens when you're not on top of your budget and not uh, doing it consistently. So I uh, wanted to update you on that and now everything is green. Everything is good to go. But yeah, please let me know what you think. I learned a lot from the last, like I made a YNAB video a couple weeks ago and I learned so much from y'all's comments. So if you see something that I'm doing here that's just an easy fix, like, hey, you should think about this, then please let me know because it would help me out so much. So I hope that video was helpful for you. As a recap, number one, one of the most effective things you can do to improve your budgeting is ironically to trust yourself, to take the things that you learn and apply them to your life. Trust yourself to be the expert of how to apply this to your own life and not judge yourself when you mess up or don't do the system exactly correctly. And second, the formula to solve any problem, and this definitely applies to budgeting, is to feel the difficult emotions as they come up, to note them, create some awareness around them, and then continue to engage in the process. That is just a magic solution to basically anything that you come across. This will help you alchemize the, you know, the belief or the feelings that might come up that if there's something I'm doing that's wrong, alchemize those into growth and forward momentum. And if you made it this far in the video, you might benefit from a call with me. I love helping people create more ease around making growth-oriented long-term changes in their life. If you click the link in my bio, you'll get a free session with me. And in this quick session, I'll help you move one step closer to where you wanna be and help you come up with a roadmap that will help you move forward after the call. So what this might look like is that you come to the call with maybe an area of tension, like I'm doing something wrong in this area of my life, us talking it through, and you leaving the session feeling more self-trust, more confidence, and knowing what the next step is in your journey. If you're at all considering it, I encourage you to take the leap. I know it's a little bit weird or scary to talk to some random guy on the internet, but convos just like this one have totally changed my life. And if you really liked watching me go over my real finances, I'm gonna, I found some other accounts that actually do this and I'm gonna link them in my bio. So check those out if you wanna see other people that budget with their real money on YouTube. Finally, I love to stay connected to all of you. So like, subscribe if you want to see more of this growth focused content in the future and leave a comment. I love to hear what y'all think. So all right, until next time.